Hello, everyone, and welcome to Filling Holes. We're going to share the City of Barrie story for how we've integrated CityWorks and Collector for a complete pothole maintenance solution. Joining us for today's presentation, we have John Cochran, GIS Analyst. I am Rob Emerson, Manager of Digital Transformation, and we'll also hear from Allison Kelly, who's the CMMS Coordinator for our Operations Department. But first, a little bit of background. The city of Barrie is in Ontario, Canada, located just 90 kilometers north of the city of Toronto uh, via a major provincial highway called Highway 400. The city is wrapped around Kempenfelt Bay, which is a part of Lake Simcoe. Our current population is 153,000, uh, but that's up from 62,000 just uh, 40 years ago. And in the next 10 years, we're projected to grow to 210,000 and to onward to 253,000 by 2041. The city of Barrie has been using ArcGIS since 2008. Uh, we implemented CityWorks in 2010, expanding the scope through uh, additional areas through 2014. Uh, since 2018, we've had a major initiative underway led by the Digital Transformation Team to modernize and improve our use of CityWorks in operational departments across the city. During that time, we've mobilized over 1,000 work activities, which have a combined annual frequency of over 24,000 tasks. We're currently using CityWorks version 15.6.4, having just upgraded in April of 2021. Uh, and our mobile users utilize the CityWorks 9.1 app. Thanks, Rob. In 2019, our roads crews patched over 17,717 potholes. The potholes are identified in one of three different ways. The call-in method from citizens, they go into Service Barry, and that was it. They took in uh, 1,159 calls in that year. Our overnight road patrol staff who are out every every evening with a application that tracks their patrols as well as any deficiencies they found. They found almost 600 potholes that year and just in general by our roads, uh, our operators in the roads department themselves, when they go out to fix a pothole that they know about, they also fix everything else that they find in their path that day. So they identified nearly 16,000 of that overall 17,000 potholes the year just themselves. Our field crews have used the collector app for many years to record pothole repairs as well as a few other things around uh, around the office. But you could say that the collector app is kind of our first foray into a mobile solution. Uh, collector for ArcJS is uh, a simple and easy interface for the field staff to use. The crews had no problem picking it up and being able to, to take care of it on their own. But clearly there are some shortcomings with it, uh, with the repairs that they would find are not being tied back to the specific service request complaints, um, as well as it then made for them to have to manage two systems out each day. One generally would end up doing the repairs in collector for the day and the other would usually be in CityWorks checking them off as they went to close out those as well. Um, as well as anything found that was put into collector was not being pushed back into CityWorks. Once mobility had officially rolled out for our other activities, we started working on a new pothole solution for the roads crew. Uh, discussions included the application team and supervisors, uh, but also we included field staff to make sure that we were getting things the way they needed them to be in the field. We did some field testing, which included myself and a team member from Digital Transformation going out with the pothole crew doing a ride along for the day to get that full experience of what their needs really were. Uh, of course, we started with the all-in-one CityWorks solution, which didn't take long for us to realize was a very cumbersome and too long of a um, process for them to be doing for those short tasks that they were with the potholes of the high frequency short short duration tasks. So we definitely needed to come up with something quick, quicker and easier for them. I'm going to leave all the exciting technical details for John to go over with you in his next section, but the end user overview of the solution, new solution looks like this. Uh, the incoming sources are still the same. Calls come in from uh, citizens through Service Barry as well as the overnight patrols. 
But now after those are automatically created as service requests in CityWorks, they get compiled into Collector and show up live. The field staff just need to log into Collector to find their new work and to fill in any other potholes that they find along the way. Later that evening, Collector does its magic and pushes the day's worth of pothole repairs back into CityWorks for the surface foreman to review in the morning and close out. We went live with this about mid-March. We have continued to stay engaged with the foreman and his crew to get their feedback and have already made some minor improvements for them. The timing was perfect as winter control was drawing to a close, um, although Mother Nature did throw some more snow days at us uh, along the way, but pothole season was about to begin. In the past few weeks, the, the crew has filled over 550 potholes with this all-in-one collector solution, and all that data has been automatically pushed back into our maintenance system of CityWorks. Uh, now to further elaborate on said magic that I was talking about earlier, I'm going to hand this over to our GIS analyst, John. Okay, so, um, so for our new solution, we really wanted to make sure that it was um, as simple as we could make it, as automated as it made sense, and as similar to what the users were already using. Uh, so I, I think we've accomplished that. We still have our, our service request inputs. We have our uh, citizen, citizen requests from our CEM system and our road patrol system. Uh, those are previous integrations that automatically send stuff to CityWorks. Once those get created, they get put into CityWorks and CityWorks automatically pushes them now to our collector app. Um, that information shows to the field crews that now see that a service or a pothole needs to be filled there. So they go over there, they fill the request, they populate the data. Um, at the end of the day, that information gets Push to CityWorks, both the service request response and the work orders. And then CityWorks creates the work orders. And at the next, the next morning, foreman comes in and closes all that work order information. Okay, so how do we do that? Okay, so the first component is we use. Um, CityWorks eURLs to get the data out of CityWorks and into our ArcGIS web map. So an eURL is functionality is in one of the, it's in the newer versions of CityWorks. Basically, it is a saved search that you allows us to create a REST service from that saved search, and that REST service allows us to dump that into our web map that then displays all of the CityWorks service request points on our map. Uh, so the users out in the field are able to, for in live time, see uh, the service requests that are active for bottles. Okay, the second component to our solution is obviously the collecting of the data itself. Um, with the service requests on the map for them to see which ones that need to be repaired, uh, the field crew generally drives to the service request that needs to be done. Along the way, they will do a find and fill, so they will just see a pothole and fill it, and they will add it to their to the collection of the data collected. Um, once they get to that service request, uh, they will uh, open up their app. There's a hyperlink that they click on, and basically that hyperlink grabs uh, the service request ID and dumps it into the pothole repair layer itself. So at the end of the day, they have all of these two different types of pothole repairs. One is just the find and fill that they were just filling as they were going around. And then there's also the ones that are responded to service requests themselves. Okay, so at the end of the night, we have all of our just online data just sitting there ready to go. Uh, and so a nightly script runs and that pulls our information from ArcGIS Online to CityWorks. And so we use an application called FME. It's a feature manipulation engine. Uh, and it runs a script that has three parts of it. Um, so the first part of the script is a data manipulation. So uh, our data, our pothole repair data is all points. And in CityWorks, we 
put all of our work orders, we assign them to road segments, so they're linear. Um, so the first part of the script is a lot of data manipulation on the ArcGIS Online data collected. So it uh, does some filtering for ones for ones that have been haven't been sent to CityWorks. Um, it reprojects our, the data from Web Mercator to our U, UTM 17N, which is the data set that or the coordinate system we use. Um, it coordinate it geo geocodes an address, uh, and then it does a spatial join to our road segments to find which is the closest road segment for it, and it uses that road segment to assign an asset ID to each pothole repair. And then finally, after all that, there is a boatload of fields that are needed at that point. So it removes all the unnecessary fields and sets us up for the CityWorks integration piece. So, uh, so we've got our first part of the script done. Uh, it's lined it up nicely for us. So now the second part of the script is the actual CityWorks integration. So it, uh, the FME application will send a data packet call to the CityWorks APIs. Uh, it does authentication, and then it sends a bunch of API calls to the various uh, application or functions that we want it to use. And that pushes the data essentially from ArcGIS Align to CityWorks. Uh, the final part is going the other way. Once all of the work orders and child work orders are created, uh, all that information gets pushed back to ArcGIS Online. Um, so it's populating the asset ID, address, parent work order, child work order, uh, the transfer date, uh, and any error messages that uh, came up while it was trying to uh, send the ArcGIS Online data to CityWorks. So if it's something didn't work for whatever reason, it'll get flagged that it tried to send it, but it didn't actually work. So the final result is uh, basically we have a single parent work order created for each day and any equipment, labor, materials all get assigned to that parent work order. Within the parent work order, uh, every pothole repair record that was done in Arcsis Online gets its own child work order that is associated to that parent work order. Um, and additionally, any service requests that were done, they get assigned to both the parent work order and the child work order that was the response to that request. Uh, so basically, we're left with this container that has all the stuff in it for each day in it. So in the morning, the foreman just has to open it up, review it quickly, and close it all. And then closing the service request alters the search, the save search. But then makes the service request disappear on the on the field workers map. So we've gone live with this. It works almost better than we could have imagined. It works great. Um, everybody's happy with it. Uh, the one issue that we came up with, or that the users identified, uh, was that for certain service requests, they don't have enough details sometimes to locate where the pothole is. And so they were still needing access to CityWorks to see the actual uh, comments within the service request. Um, so we looked at kind of adding, use, adding that to our nightly script of pulling out the comments from the service requests. And there wasn't, it was going to be kind of a headache to try to figure that part out. So we came up with another solution um, that I think is much simpler. Um, we added another hyperlink in the collector app in the web map. Uh, that basically using an arcade scripting allows us to uh, use some URL parameters that tells uh, the native app to open to that specific service request uh, when they click on the, the hyperlink. So now instead of having to go into their app or browser and try to find the service request, and do all the clickings needed to get to that point at in CityWorks if they can. Uh, now they have a one-click direct path that allows them to just click in on the hyperlink in the pop-up of their collector app, and that will take them directly to the service request by opening up the CityWorks native app. And then that's just a sample of the URL that we used underneath to, to make that happen. 
So as you've heard from the story we shared today, it took a little bit of work to get there. But why do we feel this is the best solution? Well, for the first time, we've got full connection of data from the deficiency report or the citizen request to the applicable work being done to address those reports and those requests. All of our pothole data is in one place, uh, CityWorks, and it's it's tied to the related assets, the, the road segment in this case. But most importantly, this solution allows for the best interface to be used in the field, in this case, collector for its speed and ease of use, while continuing to use the best option to manage our work, which is CityWorks. And this puts everything together in one place. So thanks for joining us today. I hope this uh, glimpse into our experience with uh, building integrated apps for CityWorks uh, has inspired you to think of how the solutions could work in your place. Um, thanks to John Cochran and Allison Kelly for joining us uh, and to the rest of the digital transformation and information technology teams, as well as the folks in operations that helped us build this solution. Our contact information is on the screen, so if you'd like to get in touch to learn more, we'd be happy to talk.